right, we'll start with questions here in the room. First question right here, Kellen. Hey, Book, good to see you. First of all, uh, we saw the shooting game back. It's been a while since we've been to practice itself. Jay got you at the end there, didn't he? Yeah, that's overtime for us. Once you start shooting from half court, <laughs> he got me. He got me. He got you. Uh, I wanted to ask you about playing against Drew. Uh, he's someone you'll spend time with on both ends of the court in this series. Mm -hmm. Just your impressions of his game and that matchup you've gotten over the years against him. He's a competitor um, at the highest level, and, you know, you're understanding you're getting that. Um, you know, so you have to be on your P's and Q's, and I've been watching him in the previous series and who he's matched up with, and he's guarding those primetime guys. So, you know, I'm sure I'll see him out there, but, you know, you have to be locked in when you're playing against him for sure. Sean, over on your right. Kevin, since you're the elder statesman of this franchise, <laughs> I use that word with you, can you give us an idea what the people here think about the Suns and also your chances of winning a championship, the fans? What they think about the Suns? Yes. I mean, I think it's the, the baby here. You know, it's the only professional team that has Phoenix in it. Every other team's Arizona. So Phoenix Suns is the, the baby franchise here, and they love it with a with passion. And, you know, I'm wearing the shirt from 93 right now. I think it started around that time to when, you know, they developed that. You hear people talk about, I remember when I – Watch Charles and them, like you hear those stories at all times and seeing the passion in their eyes when they're telling the stories and even being at the bottom of the barrel for the past five years and them still showing up and showing love, you know, shows that same type of love that they have for this team. You have any examples of maybe the last couple of weeks when you've had interactions with people, any stories to tell about how excited they are? Um, not really, I haven't been around too many people. <laughs> and I've just been in the house for real, so I've been I've been laying low. Over here, hey book. Uh, you and Chris have, have joked uh, in recent days about how when you used to play against each other that you would practically almost fight on the court just because you're both so competitive. Is there an example or a moment that when you think about that uh, that comes to mind, like during a game early on in your career where that competitiveness really came out between the two of you? I used to try to bring him to the post every time he would switch on me. So, you know, while you're walking down there to the post, he'd be like, this is not good. I'm not going for that. I'm not going for that today. And we actually went back on, you know, an app that you can check every shot that you've matched up against somebody last year. And I scored on him a couple of times, and he stopped me a couple of times. So we just stopped that conversation, that narrative. But we also got into it the first day here. You know, when we had our first practice as a team, we were doing a three-on-three -three drill. And... You know, it's just, it's kind of the survival of the fittest mindset. You know, I don't think it's really about to throw hands, but, you know, the closest thing you can do that without doing it. Sure. And then just sort of follow up on that, too. I know you spend a lot of time watching games with him as well. Mm -hmm. Just what is it like, what do you get by watching maybe another game with Chris that is different than maybe when you're practicing with him on the floor, you're on the floor with him? What do you learn from him by just watching a game with him? The attention to detail. Um, you know, and I feel it too ever since I got to the NBA. You you watch games a different way than you did growing up. You know, you're not watching it for entertainment anymore. You're you're scouting the whole time you're watching. So it might be a simple play. Somebody might have scored on this possession over here. He'll sit back, he'll rewind it. Hey, look over here, do you see what they did? Over, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's just viewing the game a different way, seeing the game a different way and just understanding tendencies and communicating it out loud when you see it. You know, we're not sitting there watching the game in silence. We're sitting there like, they let him do that again? We got to take that away when we play him. So it's just a whole nother level of, of, of basketball and, and, and film study when you're with Chris. Sure. Mark on the right. Hi, Devin. Um, I was wondering, what's your perspective on if you think there's enough of an appreciation for what you guys have done to get to this stage and the growth you've shown as opposed to any fans just chalking up to facing three teams that didn't have some of their star players in some of the games? I mean, we're not we're not here to you know justify what we're doing to anybody else for real. I mean, we've we've had goals for this group and and aspirations for this group since since day one, and you know we keep those in in home for that reason. And we compete against each other, and we're on the constant pursuit to get better every day and even during the regular season a simple play might go by and we stress it we stress it this can't happen i know it doesn't matter right now but 
later down the line, it can come back and get you, and we don't want that to happen. So just a focus for everybody, you know, to be locked in from top to bottom, not just the guys that are getting major minutes right now, you know, 1 through 15, 16, with the coaching staff, just locked in at all levels, preparing for this opportunity right here. Melissa here in the front, then we'll go to Zoom. Hey, Buck. Um, obviously, at this time of the year, everybody tightens up, everybody's focus increases. But have you noticed a distinct difference in Chris right now? He's always locked in, to be to be completely honest. Um, I mean, I'm sure he might be feeling a different way in, in his first appearance here, but you know, he's not going to show us no frantic movement or you know any nervous. I think he's prepared for this, and it's more of a I've been waiting this long preparing for this moment right here and, and it's right in front of us. So, you know, he's not walking a different way. He's not talking a different way, but you know, there's an understanding between all of us on, you know, what time it is and what we have to accomplish. Palmer on Zoom. We're gonna go to Jamal Spencer with ABC 13 in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Grand Rapids? Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Wanted to ask you, Devin, if you would, you know, thought about what ways West Michigan helped shape your passion and your love for the game. That's where it all started. Um, that's where it all started. Um, dang, threw me back thinking about it now. I'm reminiscing in my head right now, but um, that's where I fell in love with the game. You know, I fell in love with that Pistons team. Um, they taught me the game of basketball and, you know, just being around everybody in West Michigan. I remember Drake Harris just looking up to him um, every day and, and wanting to be him. Um, but Michigan, Michigan State rivalry game, just all that, all, all those memories, all the stories, you know, that's where I learned the fundamentals of the game, honestly. I always say I learned the fundamentals in Michigan. And then when I moved to Mississippi, it brought more of the dog out. So, you know, it was a great balance for me. And, you know, I credit Michigan for you know, a lot of my success, especially Grand Rapids, my hometown. I know things worked out well, but did you ever stop and think about what things would have been like had you not left? I haven't. I, I haven't thought about that. I think things would be a little different. You know, obviously, I think you learn by living through experiences. And, you know, I, I would have lived a totally different lifestyle if I stayed in Michigan. But, you know, I love Michigan, and I, I go back there in the summertime, and I spend a lot of time out there and me and my friends were just talking about for the fourth we're like any other place you would rather be if you were in the finals and it'd be on Lake Michigan probably but Milwaukee's on the other side of it so we'll be going up there so <laughs> next we're gonna go to Cameron Cox with 12 News hey book hope all is well um what's been the hardest part to get to this point for you and, and your journey and, and what's it like finally now to, to be in this moment as it hits you that you know, you're actually in the NBA Finals and four wins away from the trophy. Yeah, I don't think it'll hit me till it's all over. Um, even Western Conference champs, I mean, we're 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 on this pursuit to, you know, do what we we set out to do, and and we're here now. You know, so it's kind of hard to reflect on what you're doing when you're in the moment. So you know, our main focus right now is, you know, to win those four basketball games, and you know, that's pretty much it. Over here. Um, for you guys this year, the Bucks have switched a lot against you, especially in crunch time. You mentioned going up against Chris and switching and kind of what you used to do when you'd get a switch. How do you feel like you've developed and gotten better in that regard, whether it's attacking a switch or moving the ball and deciding not to attack a switch? Um, I mean, we've seen it a lot. I think that's what the NBA has went to. Um, a lot of teams especially, you know, trying to keep people out of their paint would we'll just switch switch one through five and everybody has to guard up. Um, but, you know, you scout that. We scout that and we try to take advantage of that. I think the Clippers use that against us a lot also. Um, and DeAndre being able to use his size and his ability to get on the offensive glass and move, move whoever his mismatch is helps out a lot also. Um, and then just having dynamic guards with Chris, Mikel, Jay, and having this floor spaced and just creating for each other. 
So, you know, we're, we're expecting to see that a bit. Either on a switch or maybe just straight up, Tuck is going to be that guy. Mm -hmm. for, for you, is that something that, like, you're excited about, like, going up against So excited. It? So excited. You know, we, we've we obviously had those matchups in practice before that have gotten heated at the highest level. But, you know, he's a competitor, and I, and I have a lot of respect for that man. So, you know, we're going to be out there battling for sure. Did you have the scoreboard like you did with Chris at all? Like, who, who me, came up? Yeah, me and Tux was a lot worse than me and Chris's. So, <laughs> <laughs> me and Chris, we talked a lot. Me and Tuck, we bumped into each other a little bit. Dan, last question. Devin, um, heading into this playoffs, there's a lot of discussion kind of about this team's lack of experience and if that would show up at some point. And I think game three against the Lakers, um, you get ejected, Jay gets ejected. Um, maybe it looks like composure is starting to go away. How did you guys kind of level it? In, in that moment, and do you do you view that as like a really important experience for this team um, mm -hmm. in this postseason run? Yeah, um, I mean, we took a long road trip at the end of the season. That even through that game, I think we went like three and two on the road trip. It was five games. It was like Philly, Boston. Um, I forgot it was it was a loaded lineup, and it were all competitive games. And we were like, this is how it's going to be at, at some level. And then we experienced the Lakers series. And we're like, I'm glad we went through that. I'm glad we had those two losses because you learn so much in that time. Obviously, you never want to lose, but you know the level of focus that we we bring back into the arena in the gym the next day. It's not more talking about it. It's like a demeanor and energy that you can feel throughout everybody. And having going through that that experience, you know, shaped us for the next series in Denver, and then seeing the Clippers and dropping two games to them also. So. Just understand that it's a series, and, and it's a long series, and you're going to have to play. You're going to have to play hard, win, lose, or draw. You know, Somebody said it before the playoffs started, like, when you win a game, you feel like you can't lose again. When you lose, you feel like you can't win again. And, and, that, and that's the playoffs for real. People get too high, people get too low. you hearing everybody talking from every different angle, but you, know, you have to understand where you're trying to go and, and what we're trying to do. Thank you, Devin. Appreciate y'all. Thank you.